right, good morning, welcome back. Now, uh, today is a very, very momentous day. After almost eight years since our very first video upload, if you check the channel, uh, dark, dingy drive to work with a 30 quid camera, blue tack to the windscreen of the car, just as a test, honestly, eight years later, we've got to a fantastic milestone, something that is really epic in my personal development as a creator and this channel and hopefully for the enjoyment of what you're going to see in the future going forward with projects and so on. And what I'm talking about is that finally, after a long, long time, two years of deliberating, a year of planning and deciding which way to go, the lathe has arrived. As you can see, I haven't got a spare footprint. The first conundrum was where to site it, where to put it, where it's going to be the most convenient for use and the least in the way. Obviously, I have to store the bikes in here at night as well, so all of that is a consideration. Now, I will do a little rearranging later. I'm thinking perhaps of moving the units on this side up to this end and putting it down. I don't know, there's all sorts of plans, but at the moment, I'm just going to put it on this big bench on the left, a big heavyweight bench. It's perfectly okay there for now, and I've got the stand the actual standard substrate that it comes with. I've got that, I'm gonna keep that boxed up for now. And when I've got either to move that bench out of the way and put the stand in its place, if that works, or alternatively to make a different place and site it there. That's all to come in the future. But for today, I've just gotta get it in, get it unboxed and get it up on that big table. Now it's currently down on a pallet, that high off the ground, it's gotta come up to a table a meter off the ground. Now, as Jeff Capes was busy, I've had to come up with a cunning plan to get it up there. I'm thinking it's going to work. I'm hoping we'll be able to do it without hurting myself or damaging anything, so wish me luck. Let's get it unboxed, let's get it in, see what it looks like. Right, that's got it stripped of all these extra bits. What remains is still 170 kilos, and even just tried to drag it, I think someone's welded it to the floor, so <laughs> up here for thinking, let's try and drag it in. Okay, now we're making this video over the course of a few days this week. So at this point, that is an initial unboxing. That's got it out of all its packaging and it's got it slid into a space where I can work with it and understand it. There's a lot of setting up to do, as you can see. Belts in the end there are not connected. I've got parts I need to understand. I've got the pulley wheels to turn around and set everything up so I can actually use it. And there's quite a lot to do. There's also some parts to still go and get. I made a single order and they weren't all available at the same time, so I'm going to call it done here as far as we're concerned, but as soon as we get back we can carry on, film some more footage of this because by the end of this video we want to be turning on operation and cutting something so you can actually see it working. First impressions though, seriously, this thing is proper beef. Thank goodness for the lift. There's no way I would have got that from the floor up to there by myself, so I'm jolly well pleased I had that. Anyway, there we are for now. I've got lots more to do. I'll see you in a bit.
Right, here we are. Okay, um, now three hours of cleaning, and I really, really am happy that I did that because everything moves freely now. The shipping wax that they spray all over it, it just gets into everything. It's under all the slides, it's under the bed, it gets into all the threads, it makes everything sticky and thick. You really have got to pull it all apart and clean all that off. But it was absolutely no problem at all. I used a very fine scotch pad to release it. It was white spirit, uh, WD-40, and in one case I used a dab of thinners just to release it, and it comes away, and then you can clean everything up, and it's absolutely spotless. Then a coating of oil over everything. So it's all oiled up now, all the threads move nicely, the saddles move nicely, the slides, Everything's moving freely, superb. Happy with it now. Now that is the first job when you uncrate one of these is to get everything cleaned up so it's ready to use. Now that that's done, I've popped the belt in there on the medium setting, 630 RPM. There are obviously six different settings. You get three different belts and the configuration of the belts gives you different speeds. I'll show you that as it goes on. Pretty straightforward, dead easy to tension everything just with one nut on the back. I love it, it's so simple to use, even I can use it. So there we are, I'm gonna call it done for now. I'm doing this in installments throughout the week. So that's it cleaned up, I'm gonna pop it away. It's nine o'clock now, this has been three hours just to clean it. I'll come back to it tomorrow night, pop a tool in, pop a piece of metal in, and do my first cut in a very long time. Oh, having lots of fun, see you in a bit. Right, I, okay, the next thing, in this list and I'm going through this a page at a time doing each of the sections one at a time and I think that's the right way to do it. The next thing as I said is putting the tool in the post and then seeing if it lines up with the center line of the machine. If it does I can then put the next thing in which is mounting a workpiece in the chuck, get that set up correctly and then I can actually move towards making a cut. But I've got to make sure that the tool, the cutting tool, is at the right height. Now they don't always guarantee that they are. Um, the tools themselves, I bought these tools, these are the ones that are an accessory in the book. If I uh, go to the back page, this is purely if you're looking at doing this yourself. If you're thinking maybe this might be for you, in the back of the book here, you get this list of accessories there. Where is it? There. So I came down and bought that set of cutting tools. Now, mainly because I know they're going to be the right cutting tools for the machine if they're an accessory to that purchase, obviously. And this is them. Picked them up the other day. You get seven in there, little set of cutting tools, uh, parting off tools, internal, external cutting tools, all sorts of things, plus a great general ordinary tool there for use. Now, obviously, as I've said before, I'm not a machinist, I'm not a metal spinner, I'm not an engineer. I'm a complete novice at this and I'm following that instruction manual so that nothing that I do is going to hurt me or make me feel that I don't know what I'm doing, I'm not going to enjoy it, that's the main point. This is all about learning as I go. So the next thing tells me to mount the tool in the post, spin it round and line it up with this centre point. This is the <coughs> tailstock centre. This sits in the absolute centre line of the machine and this tool must be mounted exactly at that centre line. If it's not, then I have to get some shims underneath like it tells me there so that I lift up where are we that one I lift up the height so that effectively it's at the correct height it has to sit on the exact center line of the machine if it doesn't then it can't cut because it's not safe so I'm gonna do that first pop that in and see if I can line this whole thing up because that all depends if it lines up then I can move forward and maybe cut something tonight if it doesn't then I've got to get some shims before I can do anything else so let's see So there we are, sadly that stops play, I'm afraid. Uh, sorry about that, I really wanted to do a cutting operation today, but as you saw, the general cutting tool, which is the one I would use today, that is too low, by about two mil, and I definitely need to shim that up so it's the correct height, and I cannot move forward until I've got those shims. They should be here on Saturday afternoon. So as soon as that's done, then I'll have that, hopefully for the next video on this, something interesting, but perhaps even make something. Some obvious thank yous. I've got to say, first of all, thank you so much to our patrons for helping this become 
a reality. This has been, I think February we said this would arrive, that's when we first targeted this. So it's been a year since I wanted to get one of these and it's finally happened. Absolutely excited, made up, stoked, all the rest of it. And thank you to the patients, most of all, for making that possible. Also to all of you as our viewers for encouragement and support. I've made this statement right from the beginning. I am not an engineer. I am not a machinist. I'm an absolute novice with this machine. The last time I touched one was 40 odd years ago and I am starting from scratch, learning everything. And I really, if I'm gonna project anything, it is never going to be a how-to. I'm not gonna do a single how-to on this. That's not what this is about. You can go and buy these. They're a hobby machine. You can purchase it yourself. They can deliver it to your house like they did or to your garage. And all you do is muscle it in, set it all up, clean everything, follow the instructions, and you can start doing your own hobby turning in your own garage. It's ever so easy. Learning by my own experience, practicing as I go along, and hopefully with your support, this will be loads of fun. But this machine will help me move forward and do other things, things I've never done before. So there we are. Thank you to all of you for watching, for your amazing support. Look forward to lots of stuff on this. All your advice, guidance, help and tips, if it's positive, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to learn from it. That's what YouTube community is all about. So there we are. Thanks to everyone. Take it easy, ride safe. We'll see you next time.